Welcome to Send It John Boats. Send it. In today's video, we're finally putting our paint job on Project Bottomland Bateau. Not this paint job. This paint job looks like crap. We've got to completely redo it. So stick around. I'm going to tell you what we messed up on the first time and how we're going to fix it on our new paint job. If you like John Boats, mud motors, and things that make you want to just yell, yeah, yeah then you've come to the right place, partner. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you go right down below here, hit that subscribe button and a little bell thingy right next to it so that you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. So let's talk about why this paint job looks like absolute crap and what we did wrong and how we're gonna fix it. So if you didn't see our first video that was titled How to Prep a John Boat for Paint, I'll leave a link to it right up here where you can go check it out. I talked about it a little bit, but basically what we did is I got ready to paint the boat got it epoxy prime like I was supposed to, everything went good. And then the day we decided to actually put the base coat color on it, the problem was the temperature started dropping. Well, the paint that we were using does not dry below about 68, 70 degrees. Well, the temperature got much below that very, very quickly. And the more we painted, the more the paint just kind of turned into like this jelly gummy crap and completely ruined the paint job. The other issue that I had was I was trying to paint this boat to make it look like the Mossy Oak Bottomland pattern which looks like this. Well, as you can see, these colors do not match. So the color that I was trying to mix for this like brownish olive color did not turn out on the boat the way that I thought. I'm not a paint mixing expert by any means. I normally just buy paint and spray it. So, but that's my fault. I should have looked at the color better before I started spraying it on the boat because it absolutely looks like garbage. Other issue that we had is these right here. These are the stencils that I ordered to try to paint this boat. Now, I normally don't try to take the easy way out of doing stuff, and in this case, I did. I thought that I could just take these stencils and hold them up on the side of the boat and spray through them and everything would look great, but and two problems with this. One, it had a lot of overspray, and none of the lines and the little blobs back here have a really nice crisp outline. So again, it does not look like the Mossy Oak bottom land that I wanted it to look like. And against my better judgment, I continued spraying until we got to where we are now, and I just gave up because the boat looks like absolute crap. So now we've got to fix it, and here's how I'm going to do it. First things first, we've got a much better paint. We're going to be using One Hit Wonders Hydrographics paint now. Why are we using Hydrographics paint? Because it's what I use every single day. It's super tough. It works. And the best part about this is you don't need any primer. And I can spray this all the way down into the mid 40s and it will still dry. Unlike the paint that I used before that just turned into like this jelly gummy bear crap at 70 degrees. So this is going to work much better because it ain't getting any warmer in Georgia anytime soon. It's like in the 50s right now. I think it's supposed to get up in the mid 60s today. So this is going to work perfect. So One Hit Wonder was nice enough to hook us up with the paint that we're using for today's project. And they've got three total colors that they gave us to use. The first color is going to be this black color that actually matches the Mossy Oak Bottomland. The second one is going to be a very close match to this olive brown greenish color. I don't even know what in the world to call this color, but a match for that color instead of this, because this is like an OD green and it does not match at all. The paint that we got will actually match. And then we've got our base coat color, which is going to be the Bottomland Beige. So the way I'm gonna paint this is a little bit reverse of how most people would normally paint this. And I'm gonna do this the correct way, just the same way I would do on a Cerakote project or a Hydro Dipping project. If you're not familiar with our Cerakote or Hydro Dipping channel, I'll leave it right up here. You can go check out the link to it and you can see how we do this all the time. But basically I'm gonna spray the pattern in reverse. So we're gonna start, we're gonna scuff all this old paint real quick because it's in really good shape and it's stuck really good on the boat so I'm not worried about removing it. And then we're gonna paint the entire boat black. I know that sounds weird, but just follow me. So after we paint the boat black, I've had stencils made. These are Avery Denison vinyl stencils. This is the same high heat stencil stuff that we use on our Cerakote projects. This stuff is great and peels really, really well and works perfect on one hit wonder paint. I use it all the time. So I had all these stencils custom made at a local shop here in Covington, but I've got enough of these to go all the way around the boat. So we're going to spray it black and then I'm going to come through and I'm going to put the line stencils down all over the entire boat. After our black is dried and I've got the stencils put on everything, I'm going to come back and I'm going to spray the entire boat that kind of olive brownish color 
and then I've got another set of stencils that's going to go on top of that once it's dry. Now I've got several different versions of these little blobs. I'm calling them blobs. I don't know what their technical term is, but I've got a bunch of different cutouts of these. We're going to put those all over the olive color once it's dry. And then we'll go over our final color, which is going to be the bottomland beige color. We'll spray the entire boat in it, and then I'll peel all the stencils and it'll be ready for our clear coat. So I know that this stencil stuff is going to be a ton of work, but I want this paint job to look really, really awesome. I've spent a lot of time working on this boat, getting it to where it is, and this is gonna be worth the time and effort. It's confusing, I know, but just follow me along as we go, and I promise you this is gonna turn out awesome. So I wanna address one other question that I got on the prep video when I showed a little bit of this paint job and how I screwed it up, and that question was, why am I not flipping the boat over and why am I not covering the trailer? As far as the trailer goes, as you can see, there's no overspray on this trailer. If you set up an HVLP gun correctly, you're not going to get overspray all over the place. And even if it does get overspray, I'm not worried about it. This entire trailer is going to have to be re-welded and rebuilt to fit this boat because this trailer does not fit it at all. And it's going to get repainted anyway, so I'm not worried about overspray on it. But it doesn't have any on it, so... I really worried about it and as far as flipping the boat over when i initially did this i was going to paint the inside and outside on the original paint job when i first tried this i got inside the boat sprayed the inside got outside sprayed the outside and just went back and forth like that there's a bunch of different ways you can do it there's no right or wrong way that's just the way i chose to do it so whatever so one thing different i'm going to do on this paint job versus what i did on the last one is i'm not going to paint this top rail like i did on the last one i was trying to make it all color matched and look good but this boat is going to take an absolute beating so since our front bumper system on the boat is all bedlinered what i'm going to do is i'm going to tape off once i get done painting everything i'm going to tape off this top rail and just do this top rail and bed liner as well that way if i get it scuffed up out in the logs and the woods and bumping into boat docks and stuff like that i won't be worried about it and it'll be a lot easier to touch up with the bed liner than it would be if i had to come back in and try to retouch up this paint job so like i was saying in the intro as far as prep the first thing we need to do is since this boat has been sitting out for a little while we're going to clean it real good i've got a squirt bottle here you can buy these at your lowe's or home depot but this one's full of naphtha you can use any kind of cleaner that you want just as long as it's a wax and grease remover and it doesn't leave any residue behind a prep saw is probably the most popular one. You get those at like auto parts stores like O'Reilly's and AutoZone and stuff like that. But it's a wax and grease remover that's quick evaporates and it doesn't leave any kind of residue behind. Just to show you, this is one of the rags that I was using to clean the boat before I started scuffing. This is the kind of crap that will be in your paint job if you do not clean before you paint. So then after we get done cleaning everything really good, before we get started, we need to scuff the boat. I'm using a red scotch Sprite pad. Now I cleaned before I scotch brighted the boat because I don't want to be taking any contaminants that may be on the surface and actually rubbing them into the surface. So clean first and then scuff your boat. If you've got good paint on it like this one, you can just scuff and then one hit wonder will spray right over the top of it. But I'm not using a whole lot of pressure. I'm just taking this red Scotch Bright pad and I'm just scuffing the surface real good. And then after you get done with the Scotch Bright pad, you got everything on the boat nice and scuffed up. Go back over it one more time with your wax and grease remover and make sure you got the boat really, really good and clean. Now here's an example of a couple of rags that I use to clean the boat with after I got done scuffing, this stuff will leave a ton of dust and debris in your paint job if you do not clean it beforehand. So make sure that you clean before you scuff and after you scuff right before you paint so that you don't wind up with crap like this in your paint job. So as far as spray guns go, we're going to be using HVLP guns to spray this with. Now, if you've never worked with HVLP before, it's really, really easy. It's not a big deal. There's a bajillion videos on YouTube that show you how to use these things. And the sky is really the limit. You can go ultra, ultra cheap with like a Harbor Freight gun or this Campus Hossfield gun that I've got here. I got this one on Amazon for like 26 bucks. I mean, it's, this thing is super cheap and it sprays really, really well. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to step up to a more pro level gun, you can go with the one that One Hit Wonder offers. These are less than like 160 bucks and they spray just as good as my high dollar gun that I spray with here every day in the shop. So for this project, I am going to be using the One Hit Wonder spray gun. There's nothing wrong with using a cheap gun you can get just as good of results the only difference is your fan pattern is going to be just a little bit smaller 
than something on a more pro level gun like this. The only thing I'm gonna add to this gun is I've got a digital pressure regulator. I will leave a link down in the description box below where you can get these on Amazon. These are stupid cheap and they work just fine. And then I'm also going to add a 3M PPS adapter. These screw in on the top of your gun just like this, snug it down real good. And what that will allow me to do is use the PPS cup system. This is just a more pro level painting system that we use here in the shop. But basically it's a hard cup, it's got a little liner, it slides inside the hard cup, and then it has a top with a strainer already in it so I don't have to worry about straining paint. It sits down on top of here and then this little locking collar locks it into place. Now the really cool thing about a spray system like this is this is all quick disconnect. This just pops on to give it a little twist. But what you do is you turn this upside down, give it a little squirt like this, and it'll pull all of the air out of the cup so that you'll have a pressurized system. And what you can do is you can actually spray on your side and upside down without having to worry about paint leaking out, and you will still get paint flow like it's supposed to. With a traditional spray cup like this, you cannot do that. You go to tip this on its side and paint is gonna leak out the top of the lid. So this is not what we use here in the shop. We use the 3M PPS system, so that's what I'm going to use today. You can use this, there's nothing wrong with it. Just make sure that you don't tilt this over on its side and you don't turn it upside down because you will spill paint everywhere. So as far as mixing this one hit wonder paint, it's super, super simple. Give it a really good shake for a few minutes. Make sure all the solids on the bottom haven't settled and they're all mixed up in a solution real good. Pop the top off, use a paint stir stick, stir it up really good, and then pour it into your paint gun. Easy as that. No mixing, no primer, super, super simple. So I'm not going to bore you with the details on how to set up one of these spray guns. One Hit Wonder has a video. I'll link to it right up here if you want to go check it out. It'll tell you all about the correct way to set one of these up. There's a million other videos on YouTube, so no point in me covering it here. I'm going to get this thing filled up. I'll meet you guys back out of the boat. Now we're going to roll those bloopers here for you in just a second. But as always, let us remember, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Bye, guys. So I had these stencils made at a, at a quick disconnect. You just put this on top. I really should put this together right. Freaking airplane flying over. I'm trying to film a video. Can't y'all fly somewhere else? You've got all this space in the sky and you want to fly right over where I'm painting. No. This is... Oh my God. <laughs>